Hey, it's Rich and Polly P, and today's video is all going to be looking at the different body shapes that we have, and this is called somatotype. So let's get having a look at this paper two topic. <laughs> So you will see in sport that there are lots of different shapes and sizes that everybody looks a little bit different. Now that's generally kind of how we are. But in GCCPE, we look at the fact that there are three main body types and we might be a little bit of a makeup of all three. So what we've got is what we call a mesomorph, we have an endomorph and an ectomorph. And all of those different body shapes are gonna be able to describe how that person looks, how that person maybe is more suited to one sport and less suited to another sport. So let's carry on looking at that and bring you a few little videos in that might help you understand the topic. So let's go for this first one. So we've got Paula Radcliffe here who is running. You will see that she does not have very much muscle, she does not have very much fat on her, and generally you would look at her as being quite lean. So her body shape is what we call an ectomorph. So she has quite narrow shoulders and quite narrow hips. So very linear in her shape. Now the advantages of that for her being an ectomorph is that she doesn't carry very much body weight. So if she was very muscular, that would be obviously a lot more mass to carry. And actually in her activity, that would be a bit of a disadvantage. So generally when we look at marathon runners, like at long distance runners, we see them as being ectomorphs. You'll also see here, that we've got some high jumpers. So we've got um, with a high jumper, again, exactly the same type of shape. And the reason for that is that that lack of body weight makes it more successful, makes them more successful, I should say, in their activity because there's less mass to try and get off the ground. Now, generally as well, we look at the fact that ectomorphs, we have this T in there, so they're tall and thin. So it's not maybe a way to remember it. So ectomorphs, think about being tall and thin. So that high jumper can get off the ground and get themselves over the bar as easily as possible. Now, if you think about the complete opposite of that, someone who's very tall and thin, we have the endomorphs. So endomorphs are generally those people who have narrow shoulders and wider hips, maybe more what we call a pear shape. Now, again, look at the videos you've got on here. You've got some examples of some endomorphs. So, you know, when we're gonna find it difficult to find a classic endomorph in a lot of the sports that we play, but generally they're going to they're going to be carrying more body weight than other people. Generally, their centre of gravity is that little bit lower. So, sports where it's you know the um, advantage would here would be you being more difficult to move. So, let's say we looked at things like props in rugby, sumo wrestlers, those sort of activities where it's difficult to move you would be the sort of uh, activities that an endomorph would be useful for. So generally endomorphs carry a lot of body weight. They can often carry a lot of um, body fat. Their hips are wide and their, sh and their shoulders are generally that little bit narrower. But again, the advantage that they have is that generally they're quite strong. They're also very difficult to move. They have a lower center of mass or gravity. We then have the mesomorph. So the mesomorph, okay, think about, you know, how all these Instagram models, all these people that you see, you know, very, very muscular people. That is what we mean by a mesomorph. So generally, they're a bit of a wedge shape. So they have wide shoulders, they have narrow hips. They're generally gonna be those kind of explosive athletes because they are gonna have those, those power attributes because of their high muscle mass. So think about you know, where we've got sprinters. You know, generally, they are your classic mesomorph. If you think about some of the um, power positions in American football, some of the sprinting positions you've got there, again, generally they're thinking about being those mesomorph kind of uh, body type, those mesomorph somatotype. So with a mesomorph, wide shoulders, narrow hips, generally gonna be putting on muscle relatively easily and maybe have lower levels of fat, so that real wedge shape. Now really, where we're looking at the activities that a mesomorph would do is gonna be linked to that idea of power because of the muscle. So let's have a look at the types of questions that we are going to see about somatotypes, particularly some of the extended ones. Okay, so what we've got on the screen now is a six mark question that has been set. So John is extremely tall and thin. His father is encouraging him to go to join a local basketball club. Evaluate whether or not basketball is a suitable activity for John to take part in. So this is the sort of thing that you need to understand about somatotypes. So you may get a scenario, you may then be asked to evaluate. So evaluate basically is looking at why they should and why they shouldn't, so those kind of balanced arguments. 
So if you are the sort of person that likes to pause the video, go and do it now, go and try the question, because I'm gonna go through the answer in a second. So test yourselves and then come back to us in a sec. If you just wanna listen, just carry on listening. So let's have a look then. So with our six mark questions, we know that we're gonna get one mark for AO1 content, we're gonna get a further two marks for any AO2 content, and we're gonna get a further three marks for AO3. So that is how the six marks are awarded with AQA. It's gonna be different if you are an Excel student or an OCR, but again, hopefully by now you understand that. So let's have a look. So you would get a mark for talking about your knowledge of an ectomorph. So you would talk about they have maybe a low fat content, that they're generally tall, that generally have narrow shoulders, narrow hips, anything like that, one mark, brilliant. AO2 is your application to the performance of basketball or that performer in basketball, I should say. So you might get a mark for saying that generally basketball is ectomorphs and John is an ectomorph. So you kind of link in the fact that I've seen that basketball is ectomorphs, I've seen that um, John is also an ectomorph, it makes sense. So that's also a mark. In basketball, height is a pretty key component because the closer you are to the basket, the better you'll be. Ectomorphs are generally tall. Again, another way to try and bring that content in there and relate it to your subject. You could say that because they're tall, they've got a less chance of their shots being blocked. You could say that they need to be able to reach high to catch the ball, that the, the basket is at 10 feet. All of that is AO2 knowledge. So by now we should be potentially on three marks. This is where students often start to lose marks. One, that you've done the AO2 at the wrong point, that you've not necessarily introduced the sport, you've gone on uh, without thinking about how you're doing it. Also, AO3, some people aren't very good at it. So let's have a look at that. So your AO3 is your analysis or your evaluation. So this is where we're gonna be talking about how suitable John is for playing basketball. So you are gonna hear, you're gonna analyze or evaluate. So you're gonna talk about why he might be good, but also you have to discuss why it might not be good. Now, we're saying here that all ectomorphs are gonna be fantastic at basketball, but what if they've got no coordination? What if they can't shoot? What if they have no skills? Probably not gonna be regular basketball. And that's what the sort of thing that we need to put in here. So it does provide an advantage, but on its own, it's not saying that you're gonna be good at basketball. That would be an acceptable AO3 point. You also need some specific skills, such as dribbling and shooting and layups and rebounding, all those things. That again would be an AO3 response. You could talk about the fact that John might simply not like the sport. That would be acceptable because we're just talking about how suitable it is. Just because he's an ectomorph doesn't mean that basketball is gonna be the thing that he likes to go and do. However, you could talk about the fact that being tall is the advantage. It means that he has more chance of blocking shots, and more chance of making more rebounds, um, that he can get off the floor easier because of his lack of uh, body weight. All of those things are positives, and that's what you could talk about here. But you do have to talk about the other side. So for instance, not all tall, uh, not all tall players are elite players. Not all elite players are tall. So there's all of those different aspects that you would talk about in your exam. Now, if that was a mesomorph, if that was an endomorph, they could give you something that is wildly inappropriate. So for instance, a mesomorph being a ballerina, that might be something that you go, well, yeah, it could be this, but it could be that. And they're the sort of things that you might see in the exam. So really quickly, there are three somatotypes. types. You should be able to distinguish them by their body fat, by their muscle, by their hips, by their waist, and then you need to be able to then apply that knowledge into an exam question. So thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram, check us out on Twitter, check us out on Facebook, all the different things, planet underscore PE. Cheers, guys.